During the resurgence of mechanical keyboards, Leopold were one of those brands present and were regarded to be on the higher end. And nothing much has changed. They're still up there for retail ready to buy mechanical keyboards, so I'm excited to check out my first Leopold on the channel, although I have used an Arcus Retro Tiny, which is basically a FC660M. This however is the Leopold FC980MPD, which is the mechanical version, whereas the FC980C is the electrocapacitive Topra version, which is super cool but also super expensive. And also, I wasn't able to confirm what the PD in the name meant, but this is for the newer versions. Inside the box we have the keyboard with a dust cover, which is always nice, a mini USB cable, a plastic ring keycap puller, a USB to PS2 adapter, and some extra keycaps that work in tandem with the dip switches, including a stepped caps lock. A big thanks to mwave.com.au for providing this keyboard for review, and I'll put all the links in the description. Out of the box, and this is a nice feeling keyboard, it has some good heft to it, coming in at about 1.13 kilograms, and there's no flex to it, feeling very sturdy in the hands. And this just has an aura of quality. The plastic has a nice rougher than usual texture to it, and looks great attracting no fingerprints. The design of the enclosure is very clean and simple with a familiar rectangular design. The Leopold logo is sleek and stealthy on the front right, and we have our lock indicator LEDs above the numpad. There's a couple of different versions of this with either a black or white case and different keycaps. I have this subdued grey and blue colourway for the keycaps on a black case, which I personally think looks quite classy while still having some colour. The typeface on the keycaps is clean and elegant, and the legends are sharp because these are double shot, meaning that the legends are another piece of plastic, so they will never fade away. And to add to that, these are PBT plastic and have a rougher texture, which isn't often seen with double shot keycaps which tends to be made from ABS. And the double shot nature makes them a very solid 1.5mm thick. Looking at the side profile, and these are Leopold Step Sculpture 2 keycaps, which are shorter than the typical OEM keycaps that you see everywhere, and are very similar to Cherry Profile keycaps, being very comfortable to type on. And finally on the bottom we have a couple of flat rubber feet for non-slip, and two flip up feet that are also rubber tipped. There's a cable routing channel and the mini USB port in the middle. And then we have our dip switches. Dip switches are used to switch a few keys around. So switch 1 swaps left control and caps lock. Switch 2 swaps windows and left alt. Switch 3 swaps windows and the FN key. And finally switch 4 disables the windows key. And all of these changes have the appropriate keycaps to match with the extras that we got in the box. I personally never really use dip switches as I like a standard control position and I am a caps lock user, but yeah, it's good to see that there is some sort of customizability, but that's pretty much it as there's no programmability available. Although what makes this keyboard special is the layout and size. We usually refer to this as the 1800 layout after the Cherry G80 1800. This is quite a well-liked layout, first of all because it looks cool, although it probably won't be appreciated as much to others, but it combines the 10 keyless and full-size form factors. In the past, I've looked at the Cooler Master Master Keys Pro M and the Vortex Vibe, which both adopt a very similar feature in combining the nav cluster, arrow keys, and the numpad together to give us a more compact keyboard, very much like a 10 keyless keyboard. However, with the Master Keys Pro M and the Vibe, the numpad and arrows are combined so that you can't use them simultaneously, which personally, I don't particularly like. But with the 1800 layout, we have the dedicated arrow keys so there's no swapping modes required. To accommodate the arrow keys, the bottom row has been shrunk and therefore has non-standard keys, although many good key sets will be compatible, and frankly key sets that don't will probably be a downgrade on these in my opinion. We have a shorter 1.75 unit right shift key, which again is fine, and finally a 1 unit zero key. So basically, we nearly have a full-size keyboard, 
but most of the nav cluster, which includes keys like insert, delete, page down and all that, are on the numpad. However, at the top right hand corner, they've opted with these keys here, which are also on the numpad secondary layer as said, which then has made them move the print screen, scroll lock and pause break keys to the I, O and P keys. And I personally really like this approach as it doesn't compromise the greatness of dedicated arrow keys. I'm a big fan of arrow keys because of how I use my keyboard and of course everyone's use case is different but I feel that this is a very flexible layout that many people will like because it is essentially a full size keyboard in terms of primary functionality with a numpad and all but in a form factor that is only one row longer than a 10 keyless keyboard. There's also the even more compact but again basically the same thing with the 96 key keyboards that are also very popular in the enthusiast community. Taking off the keycaps and I have Cherry MX Black key switches and I guess when you're buying more higher priced keyboards having only Cherry MX key switches available becomes sort of a limitation in my opinion but I'm pleased with these as they're decently smooth. And being MX Blacks, these are a heavy linear switch, meaning that they have no tactile bump or click. The keyboard types very nicely and you feel that solidity under the keycaps and it doesn't feel and sound as hollow as other cheaper keyboards. Opening up the keyboard is simple and is one of the things I like about Leopold keyboards. There's three screws on the bottom, one of which had a warranty void sticker over it and since it does have a plastic enclosure, it's using tabs to hold it in place but these are exposed rather than a few millimeters in so it makes it easier to release them. The plastic top shell is a nice feeling piece of plastic and is reasonably thick and that arrow cluster gives it a bit more rigidity, not that it really matters when put together. The bottom shell comes with some foam, which I might add is nicely cut, but since it is quite thin, unlike the stuff that I saw on the Vamilo keyboards, from what I feel and hear, it has a minimal impact on key feel and sound. Leopold state that it is a sound absorbing pad, but testing it with and without, the difference is negligible. There's a bit of ribbing on the bottom surface for reinforcement and here we have our mini USB port and rather than having the header and dip switches directly on the main PCB like normal, they're on this board over here. So looking at the main board, we have this header here in which these pins go into. So I can just lift the keyboard straight out of the bottom shell whereas I would normally have to pull the cable out. The PCB does have quite a bit of residue on it However, the solder joints are very clean. Since there is no backlit version of this, this PCB does not have any holes or resistors for LEDs. And the mounting plate is made from 1.5mm thick steel, which is the standard, and is folded at the front and back, being very rigid. Alright, so overall, it's a lovely keyboard. The build quality is solid for a keyboard of this nature, with a rigid plastic case and internal steel mounting plate. And the black case looks great with the stunning blue and grey keycaps that look very classy and wouldn't be out of place in an office environment, looking very professional in my opinion. But it's all about that layout, and I love it. First of all, that detached arrow cluster may seem unappealing to some, but this layout just looks cool, but of course it works really well as well. For a compact keyboard with a numpad, I most prefer this style or a 96 key layout, rather than a combined nav cluster and numpad keyboard since I don't like switching between modes. And I think this type of layout is very flexible and can be used by anyone, giving us the primary functionality of a full size keyboard but the space saving benefits of a 10 keyless. This is only available in Cherry MX switches which is fine for many 
but I like to eventually swap them out since it is reaching to be that sort of board where you want a bit more out of your key switches. And I wish I could put some LEDs in, but these aren't real negatives. This is my first Leopold review and it hasn't disappointed me, and I can say I'm very impressed with this beautiful keyboard. And I think it's fairly priced in my opinion for the keyboard that you get. Again, a big thanks to mwave.com.au for providing this keyboard for review and their continued support, and I'll put the links in the description if you want to check it out.